welcome back. Uh, we've got our second instalment of our uh, airbrushing the nun uh, video tutorial for you. So in this part, what we're going to be looking at is creating these sort of gruesome uh, colours with the teeth, adding a little bit of candy around these edges uh, just to give it that sort of that that eerie glow, uh, and obviously adding the the final highlights. So again, we want to be able to to get into this. Uh, we're going to be using a little bit of sort of shielding to help a few little sort of texture stencils um, and adding those all important final sharper white highlights so again our full tutorials and more are available on our training site which is learn to airbrush.vhx.tv uh, and hopefully after this one we'll be able to upload even more just to keep you fed and our youtube fans and subscribers happy um, so let's get into this, let's get some of these candies working and let's paint in these teeth. So I'm just going to switch to a candy blue. So you can just see we've got these sort of uh, blue hints just on the side of the cheek. Just to give us that sort of little bit of a glow on that side. We've got a little bit just in the, on and around the nose. A little touch just off this side and obviously does tend to drift into the white of the clothing just a touch Obviously down in this neck area as well. Just enough to give it that sort of eerie look. So what I want to do is drop onto this mouth area. Uh, there's a lot of sort of blood and uh, drips and the teeth have all got all these colours in there. Uh, but I just want to sharpen up some of these bits first. So I'm going to go back in with uh, black. And I've just got my cut out just over these teeth. I just want to sharpen up this area first before I do anything else, just to get rid of some of this overspray. So I just need to sharpen up some of these teeth, if I ever get there. Just to give me a little bit more contrast. Now the ends of the teeth are quite dark anyway. But I just wanted to re-establish those, those lines. And the same on the bottom. Just wanted to pick up on those bottom bits. Now the bottom lip is quite sort of dark on this area I can just pick up a little bit of it uh, it's pretty much hidden in the gore and the, the guts which is sort of hanging from it at the minute so let's just use this bottom shield as well Just going to shadow over those bottom teeth just to take the harshness off uh, that bottom edge. So, already that looks better. 
Uh, it's going to work well for me to add the colour to it. Or if they're too dark, the reds are just not going to show up very well. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, there's one more thing I want to do, which is going to make things a little bit easier for me. Is I'm just going to cut along the top of these teeth, uh, just so I can shield them in and paint me in a little bit of a darker line. They're quite a quite a good set of teeth to be honest. So with just that, that top edge off there, that'll give me a good shield to work with. So I'm just gonna piece this in. I really don't want to go too dark. I just want to paint off that edge. Just to give me more of the shape. Just so I've got that sort of edges to the to the gums. So I just want to separate some of these uh, teeth by just lining up that top section with the bottom part and just lightly bouncing off that edge just to give me that, that part. The same on the bottom. It's just giving us that little bit more shape to work with. So before we go any further on the mouth, I just want to start to add in some of the colour. So one of the first things I'm, I want to add is a candy gold. So I've just got this candy gold and I can see from, from the reference we've got this sort of dirty yellow uh, look to it. But I could use uh, obviously a transparent to add them in. Uh, they'll pretty much work the same way. But I just want to start to, to tint down some of these uh, bits of the teeth with this gold. Just to give it that sort of that yellowy tone we won't see a lot of it and by the time we've gone in now with a uh, candy orange we're going to start to sort of blend into that sort of uh, that yellow so it'll just take it off just a touch so now with the candy orange i'm just going to start to let me see already what's happening to that gold uh, it's just knocking it down. I use gold rather than candy yellow. The, the yellow, still at this stage, might sort of give that uh, a little bit more green look to it.
So still bearing in mind the shape of them. So obviously if I'm painting on the edges or around that top, it's still want to be sort of trying to give them this sort of rounded uh, look or feel to it. So especially some of these bottom teeth, I'm going to add a little bit of colour there, but I really need to darken these in the reference, so you're not, you've only just seen them. So now I'm going to switch to a candy red just to start to add some of these bits in uh, to those teeth. Now if I didn't do the uh, sort of the gold or the orange first I would generally sort of get a pink look to the teeth hence why sometimes you're thinking well why go through all that when you don't need to you just need to add uh, the red it's mainly just so I don't get that sort of uh, pink so what a uh, candy red over over the white will give me a sort of a pink feel to it so I'm just going to use this shield as well you can hopefully it's just picking up you're getting this sort of staining onto the teeth just to give us that little bit more sort of giving us some okay. and with this red you can see over the top there with this white it's starting to give me that sort of pink look to it but I'm just going to take this down to that edge we've got a little bit of detailing to do in there anyway so I just want to give that sort of feel and look So to add some of this detail marks in, I'm not going to use black for these. Uh, I'm going to use drop to a sepia, a little bit warmer, uh, and it'll help me add just a little bit more sort of uh, warmth, keeping it that well, the black can generally start to kill things off. So just by shielding in, if you don't want to go in freehand, I'm just using that to help me add in some of those darks. The, the, the black will sort of pretty much kill it off. So this is helping keep it sort of just a touch warmer. I find sepia doesn't clash with a lot of things. So it tends to keep things a little bit um, more realistic. Although I'm not going for realism at this point. Uh, this is just a nice sort of good uh, custom mural really. And I just want to pick up on some of those uh, teeth again and just separate them some darker lines in between. So I'm going to reach for the shield and do the same as I did before. in the reference this tooth is pushed back a little bit so I'm just going to push that one back 
Just gonna push a lot more of these back. These are really dark in this background. Just up to this point, so they're sort of going inside, so they're staying sort of back and on the ends. The ends are quite these longer ones are quite dark, but I'm gonna re really sort of pick that up with black uh, shortly just to sort of push that back. It'll bring those teeth forward a little bit more. So again on this side, just with this sepia, I know it seems like we're just covering up all that work. So there's only a couple of these which are really Showing any light. Okay, so it looks a little bit subdued at the minute, but we've got a lot of these sharper highlights to add on to make them look wet. Uh, and we've got all this sort of dribble and blood just around the mouth which we're going to add in next. So just to help me with this sort of uh, blood which is around the face, I'm going to start to take out some of this shape. Now again, I need to be sort of careful with it. I'm going to soften some of the edges. But I just want to take out some of these parts. Just to help me add in that sort of blood splatter or dribble uh, around the face. So it tends to just come around. It's quite dark down this side so it's kind of difficult to see. Um, but I just want to make sure that I've got everything I pretty much need. So this will also help protect the area uh, while I'm painting in as well, just to keep uh, that edge nice and clean. So I've just lined that sort of cut out up and what I've also added in is this little sort of lower part as well and just take that up just to stop any of that sort of red uh, overspray. So I'm going in with the red candy again. And obviously in the nature of candy, the more I add of this, the deeper uh, the colour will go. So let's 
let's have a look. So just off this bottom now, I'm going to start to add in just a little bit. It tends to just fill up onto that bottom, bottom jaw. I have to hide that little bit of an edge. Because there's that sort of dribble which just comes off the bottom. So I'm just going to move the camera down just a touch. It tends to just come off that bottom lip. And dribbles down. So I'm going to add lib a little bit more and add a few more. It just comes off that bottom edge. Just to add that little bit more dribble. So for some of these edges as well, uh, I'm going to go in with the texture shield just to sort of soften and add some more of that sort of splatter uh, around that face. So I'm going to find some of the finest uh, parts. Don't want to go overboard, just to break up. Some of those little bits you can just see it's giving you that sort of little bit more of a little bit more of an edge and a little bit more sort of texture and I just love adding these extra little bits because it just it, it just makes all the difference. So once we know we've got this colour in, we're going to get, we've got to be careful with what we're, we're doing, especially around the candies. So what I would suggest doing at this point is just giving a little wash with transparent base or intercoat clear, uh, mainly just to sort of seal off the candy. Uh, so because we're going to go over with uh, a white, just to add some of the highlights to it. And what can happen with white over candies, you can get a little bit of bleed. Um, so. I'm just going to go back in with the white and I'm starting to add in some of these sort of reflections and highlights. That are on the sort of the, the gum area and you can see already that that's just, I just love this part. Just to make it makes a massive difference to these uh, this mouth area. Just going to lighten a couple of these up. There's a few sort of highlights just on the sort of the gum area and this bottom lip. But keep these nice and sharp to help keep them looking sort of wet. So for the paint really, I'm probably past, uh, for this white, I'm past 50-50. I'm probably at around about, let's say one drop of white to three drops of thinner or reducer, uh, just to help the flow with white. As you, If you've been working with white a lot, you probably know it's one of the, uh, the worst colours to sort of airbrush with really. Uh, but you can tend to push it quite far 
um, to, to get it to flow. But the problem is with the more solvent in, the more transparent it becomes. Just going to add a few more. Sort of highlights. While well, I've got the white. Remember with things like these multiple sort of light passes uh, a lot better than just one heavy sort of pass with, with, uh, with the shield. Let's just get you in a little bit closer just so you can see uh, this texture. So before I change back from the white, I'm just going to hit uh, some of the, the lighter parts just to make sure I've got everything I need before I get rid of this white. Because the last colour we're going to just add into uh, is going to be a sepia tone. Just to add some, mainly some little bit more warmth around the eyes. So in the reference, it's got sort of like a, a browny, dirty sort of colour there. And at the minute we've just used black and white. Uh, so I want to just drift some of this colour over onto these edges. So I'll get that sort of more, uh, sort of warmer look to it. It'll just add that sort of dirty um sort of evil look before i go any further uh, really i'm just going to use a tack cloth uh, this is a water-based tack cloth which uh, automotive painters use just for wiping the surface to pick up any sort of bits of dust or sort of bits of uh, crap that might be around that you don't want in your in your paintwork obviously so I'm just going to give that a tack off and from there you can you can see I've got a little bit of overspray uh, around the edge uh, so we can look at that we're going to add the little bit more of the the sort of the coat or the, the hood into that in, in shortly uh, but I just want to go in um, and sort this sepia out first we can adjust some of these with a little bit of black uh, but I just want to get this sepia in if we finish this side of the face uh, all we've got to worry about is just that outer edge at this point. So with this sepia tone, I don't really want to start detailing everything again. But I just want to let this sort of drift down onto the sort of the shapes I can see. Just got, got a little bit more, but you can hopefully you can see that it's just got this slightly um, warmer tone to it. Whereas the black can be obviously quite cold. I just want to add again this little bit of sort of darker texture in there. Now it's just starting to push that eye back and making the, the, the white sort of jump forward a little bit more as well. It's just push those eye sockets back a touch. Add this little bit of 
a little bit of texture inside. These things just save you so much time, it's, un it's unreal. I've got a little bit around this sort of nostril. Again. I'm just darkening around some of these areas because even in that sort of blood there was uh, there's still shadows and darker areas Fantastic. I've switched to black mainly just to address some of these areas as I mentioned uh, earlier. So I just want to get rid of with the cutout. I just want to get rid of that sort of overspray. So just to sort of sharpen up and clean up. So it doesn't need a lot, it just has that extra little bit um, of tidiness to it uh, and get rid of that telltale uh, overspray really. Okay, so, and finally, for this last sort of um, bit, we're going to add in this the, this sort of hood or cloak or whatever it is. And I've got a really over-reduced white. So I'm, when I say over-reduced, I'm talking probably one drop of paint to around about eight drops uh, of reducer. And I'm just adding in, there's just some subtle sort of softness to it. I don't want to go too, too heavy with it, hence why it's over reduced. If you want to add a little bit of transparent base to it, just to make it even uh, more so, then please do so. Uh, right, if you don't like working with uh, really over reduced paint, Just nice and light.
So there we have a really effective, uh, simple enough mural for you to build just using a limited number of colours. Uh, black, white, sepia and obviously some of the candy colours. If you haven't got candy colours, uh, don't forget you can add some of these um, with the, the transparent paints that you've got. It, or opaque paints. Um, just over reduce them a little bit just to make them a little bit more transparent. Uh, but in general, if you're going to use uh, opaque colours or transparents, add the colours in and do your final contrasting like on the shapes of the teeth last. Uh, only because transparents are, are pigment based. Um, so as the candies have allowed this to show through, uh, the transparents will hide it and milk it up just a little bit. Uh, but again, you don't need candies. You can use transparent blue, uh, transparent sort of yellow or gold and just work it down that way. Now the colours are going to be, if you use transparent, they're going to be quite bright and vivid. If you like that, okay, that's fine. Uh, but remember, if you want to have a look at some of the, the more intermediate or advanced ones where we talk about colour and how we can bring those colours down, have a quick look at some of the portrait work that we've we've got in the advanced section where we go through mixing the colour. So we can we can take a standard yellow and bring it down to this tone if needed. So just using a limited number of colours, a nice effective custom mural uh, on a darker background. So there we go, we've got our final painting finished. I really really hope uh, it's giving you an insight on, on and a little bit more confidence in building your own custom murals. Uh, the image for it itself, uh, just do a search for the movie uh, The Nun and you should find a good reference picture for it. Uh, obviously we printed out at A3 so you've got that sort of that size. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's uh, giving you a few new techniques or just a little bit of motivation to paint. Uh, so a massive thank you to all our subscribers. And if this was the first video you've seen from us, have a look back and check through uh, and please click subscribe and we'll see you next time.